Hi friends, Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and thanks for joining me today. If you're looking to make a big impact with your furniture, today's tutorial is for you. Today I'm sharing how to decoupage your furniture with rice decoupage paper. Now I've tried decoupaging with napkins, with tissue paper, and with a few other things. They all turned out really well. But I have to say, this decoupage rice paper is by far the easiest to use. And it's inexpensive, and it applies with a product you already have on hand. So just let me get set up, and I'll be right back. Let's start. I'm sharing the start to finish tutorial for these curb shop nightstands, but if you're here specifically for how to decoupage your furniture, please skip over to this timestamp. I'll include that on screen and also in the description below. So as I mentioned, my sister found these uh, nightstands curbside on one of her bulk days and she was kind enough to haul them into her car and put them in her garage so I could come pick them up and work on them. And if you're a reader of the SI blog, I know I mention every time I get a curb shop piece, I love it. They're one of my favorite types of pieces to work on. Why? Because I like stepping out of my comfort zone and trying new colors, trying new paint techniques, trying new products that I've never tried before uh, because I've got nothing to lose. Nothing was paid for these pieces and I feel I can be a little more creative and adventurous when it's a curb shop piece of furniture. These tables were pretty filthy, so before I brought them into my studio, I gave them a really good cleaning outdoors with a TSP substitute. Once they were 100% clean and left out in the sun to dry, I brought them down into my studio and the first thing I did was remove the dated hardware. To remove the hardware back plate and the detail plates on either side of these nightstands, I just used the tip of the screwdriver to pry them away. They're usually just held on by tiny little trim nails and they pry away very, very easily. Once all the hardware was off, it was time to deal with the dated drawer detail. To get the dated panel off the front of the drawers, I started using my screwdriver as well and just tapped it with my hammer and tried prying it off. These panels were held on pretty darn good and uh, it was a bit of a hack job I did here. If I had paid for this piece, I probably would have been more careful. <laughs> but because it was a curb shop piece, I just kept on with that screwdriver until I couldn't anymore. Once I realized the screwdriver was doing more harm than good, uh, as you can see here, a chip off the corner came out because I was prying so hard. I switched over to a little pry bar. And here's a little quick tip. Always make sure that you put, say, a little shim of wood underneath. If you're gonna be using leverage on the side of your piece, just as shown, it can take out a chunk of the furniture. So you could use like a doubled up cardboard, you could use a small piece of shim wood and just put that under your tool in the area that you wanna pry it. And then here, if you're putting a little force on it, you're not gonna damage your furniture. So the pry bar and uh, the hammer with a little force worked fine. Uh, with a little bit of elbow grease, it just popped right off. Once I had both of the drawer panels off, I was left with the protruding nails sticking up. Uh, now you can work this two ways. You can either pull the nails out or you can hammer them back in. Hammering them back in is the easiest way to do it so long as the nail heads don't protrude from the other side. Um, these were sunken in. They were shot in by a nail gun, so I had room to play. So I went ahead and I hammered them in.
Here I'm using a nail punch to countersink these nails. Uh, I didn't want any protruding from the wood fill that I was going to put on top. These nail punch sets usually come in sets of three. You get three different sizes. They're usually between 10 and $12, really inexpensive, but they really come in handy. As with all the tools and products I use, I'll list everything in the detailed box below. Once the sharp nail heads were all countersunk, I went ahead and cleaned up the top of these drawers by removing the flaked off uh, veneer that I had uh, hacked up. <laughs> so all I did was I took a putty knife, a metal putty knife, and I put it underneath the loose veneer. And then taking a craft knife, I just cut it off where it is glued on. I hope that makes sense. And I just kept on doing this to the two drawer fronts so it would make a cleaner front before I apply the wood fill. To clean it up further before applying wood filler, I used this tool, which is a must have in my toolkit, this oscillating tool, which I got a master craft from Canadian Tire, but they have a ton of uh, other really good brands that I'll list in the description box below. And this is a must have because it has so many uses to it. Here, I put on the triangle sander and it gets into corners and small places beautifully. I use this to sand off the front of these drawers. I also use them in every one of my makeovers when I'm say painting the drawer frame and you know how you get a little bit of paint on the frame lip. I just clean it up and it, has, it gives a really nice crisp line. These oscillating tools can also be used to cut, as I shared in my last doll planter video. Um, they can grind, they can cut, uh, they're great for plastic, metal, wood, they sand. There's so many uses to them. So again, I'll list uh, a really good one down in the description box below if any of you are interested. This is by far way easier to use than one of those corner cat sanders because it gets into tighter places. After I had the drawer front sanded down nicely, I used Dixie Bell's white mud to fill in any of the divots. Uh, I chose Dixie Bell's white mud because it's super easy to sand rather than say a Bondo, which dries much, much harder. So you, this can even be sanded by hand if you don't have a sander tool or an oscillating tool with a, with a sanding attachment to it. This can easily be sanded by hand using a sanding sponge or any sort of piece of sandpaper. Once the drawer fronts were filled, I went in and filled all the hardware holes and any of the other uh, holes that were there from the adornments on the side and also the kind of corner mess that I made while trying to pry the drawer detail off. Then I went back in, sanded all the wood filler nice and smooth and gave the entire piece a scuff sanding before I primed. And here's a quick tip for sanding furniture. You do not need any fancy sander or equipment. When I first started as a furniture painter, I didn't have an orbital sander. I didn't have a palm sander. I didn't have an oscillating tool. I had none of that. And I didn't even go out and buy a hand sanding tool. All I did was took a block of wood wrapped a sandpaper around it and this is what I would use for sanding the tops of my pieces and scuff sanding and it was all just about swapping out the grit of the sandpaper. Um, for a heavier grit it's the lower number so if you want an aggressive grit it's say a 60 grit or an 80 grit. If you want a lighter grit or a less aggressive sandpaper, it's the higher the number. So you would do say a 180, a 220, that's just to smooth everything out. Uh, for instance, if you want a stain. But again, this quick tip, you don't need a lot of equipment to get yourself started. Before I primed, I cleaned off all the dust and then gave it a quick once over with a tack cloth to make sure that all the dust was removed. 
Then using this Dixie Belle Boss Primer, which comes in gray, white, and clear, I gave these nightstands two coats. Boss is a stain blocking primer, so it will block odors, it will block stain, it will even block bleed through, but time is required to use this primer. So uh, if any of you have been on to Salvaged Inspirations, my blog, or have watched any of my YouTube videos, you know that BIN or BIN shellac base primer is my go-to. And I will include the card up in the corner so you can go check out that video. Uh, the reason being is because it is fast. The Bin Shellac Base Primer works quickly. The downside is it does have a very strong odor. It, the cleanup is not easy because it's not water-based, but go check out my video for the solution to that. And also it's expensive. So Boss is a great alternative if you want a lesser expensive primer that's going to be a stain blocker, odor blocker, and also if you have the time to use it. So let me explain. It can be brushed on, sprayed on, or you can use a roller to apply it. It requires at least two coats. You apply the first coat, you wait one hour and apply a second coat. To get the stain blocking properties, you have to wait 24 hours before you paint. Uh, for myself and the amount of furniture I do on a weekly basis, the BIN or Bin Shellac Base Primer makes more sense because it, within an hour I'm painting. But if you have the time, this boss is a great alternative. Here I am applying the Boss Primer, but I just wanted to add another little quick tip for any of you just starting out. Try and invest in uh, the best paintbrush that you possibly can. Um, paintbrushes are, I mean, they will last you for such a long time if you get a good quality paintbrush. And I have a whole blog post on salvaged inspirations of my favorite paintbrushes, which I'll actually include in the description box below, uh, because it's very important. I use my paintbrushes in a variety of ways. I mean, I use the tips to get into the corners, as you can see here. I pounce the paintbrush up and down to get into the grooves. I use the sides of the paintbrush to um, do the lip on drawers. And really, you just want to get a really good quality paintbrush so it's not going to split on you, so it's not going to lose bristles. Um, so just invest in something that you can afford at the best that you can afford at any given time. And it will last you for years. If you take care of your paintbrushes nicely, they will last you for years. So after the two coats of Boss Primer were on these nightstands, it was time to head out and relax. So my sister and I treated ourselves to some duck donuts. And for those of you who are new to Salvaged Inspirations, yeah, I'm a huge donut monger. <laughs> I love my donuts. The next day I went downstairs and I applied two coats of apricot in Dixie Belle's chalk mineral paint. I believe I've only used this apricot color in one other of my other makeovers in all these years. It's a color that's a little outside my comfort zone. So again, I thought it would be great to try, but I also sourced it from the decoupage paper that I was going to use. There was a touch of apricot peach goodness in one of the flowers and I thought well that's what I'd like to bring out and have in the background so that's why I chose the apricot for this particular uh, nightstand set okay so now for some decoupage fun all right these decoupage rice papers are very easy to use um, they come in a ton of different designs floral and otherwise you can buy them from dixie bell their bells and whistles line you can buy them from redesign with prima there's probably some other companies that have them as well but they're they're made for furniture so i find them much easier to use 
uh, rather than say a tissue paper or a napkins. And I've used both for decoupaging on furniture. Uh, when it comes to the tissue paper or the napkins, you require Mod Podge or, or some sort of other adhesive. These decoupage rice papers apply with top coat, which if you're a furniture painter or furniture refinisher, you already have on hand so no special product is required and they're a really inexpensive alternative to transfers transfers can be quite costly running you anywhere between say 25 and 50 dollars whereas these rice papers you can buy anywhere between i would say five and ten dollars usually and they have just as big of an impact. Uh, you can place them on all your furniture. You can pick and choose what parts of the furniture you want to place them on. Uh, and I find them a lot of fun to use. So I chose this colorful floral from the Bells and Whistles line. Uh, again, it's a little out of my comfort zone because it's quite bold just looking at it in the package, uh, but I'm so glad I tried it out. I started by removing the sheets out of the package uh, and then I cut off the edges. There's a little white edge around these papers which I cut off and as you can see these papers are thin, they're porous uh, so the top coat can get through them and it can adhere to the furniture nicely but they're more durable than say a tissue paper or a napkin so which makes it much more easier to work with so again I just took a pair of scissors and I cut off the white trim after the border was cut off I placed the design where I wanted it and then just using my fingernail I created a crease where I needed to cut it so it would fit inside the panel nicely. Now you could use your fingernail, it's definitely thin enough to do that, or you could measure if you feel more comfortable measuring, but either way you're going to cut your decoupage paper to size. As I mentioned, to adhere this decoupage paper, no extra products are required. Uh, I just used a clear coat, satin clear coat by Dixie Belle. You could use any type of top coat that you have on hand. And what I did was I just laid a layer of the top coat inside the panel where I was going to adhere the paper. Immediately after brushing on your clear coat is when you lay down your design. You don't have to wait for it to dry or semi-dry or anything. You want to lay down the paper while it is still wet. Also, I wanted to mention, if you don't position the paper right the first time and you have to pull it up, it's not a big deal. Uh, this is much more durable than tissue paper or napkins or some other papers that they have out there. So you can actually pull it up and reposition it and it won't tear on you. Here I am positioning it, and just with my fingertips, I am making sure there's no air bubbles or creases in the design. You might see me pulling out a little something, and that's the fibers from the paper. So if you have any little fibers that are sticking out, you can just pull them out, they come out very easily. Once I had it all laid down flat, I took a plastic putty knife and I just very lightly and smoothed, smoothly smoothed it all over just to ensure that any of the excess crinkles or bubbles were all out and that I had it in the corners perfectly. Then I took the top coat and I brushed it over again. So there's no, there's no waiting for this. It goes by quite quickly. Um, you just to seal it on you use the same top coat and you just brush it on while everything is still wet and that's all there is to it my first panel was laid down and now it's just rinse and repeat i pulled out my second piece of decoupage paper i cut off the trim i positioned it where i wanted it i used my fingernail to actually make the groove and give me a cut line I brushed on a coat of clear coat, top coat, and laid my design down, making sure there were no air bubbles or creases. Once I had it looking exactly the way I wanted, I applied another top coat, 
to the paper and then I went ahead and I just top coated the whole drawer since I had the top coat in hand. I repeated the same process for the second drawer and I have to say the apricot coming through the rice paper, I, I just love how this all came together. The florals look so beautiful on top of the apricot base. To finish this piece off, I took the same Dixie Belle clear coat in satin and applied two coats of it all over these nightstands. I usually spray my finishes, but uh, I just wanted to share again how if you're first starting out and you don't have a sprayer, top coat can easily be added by brushing it on. Once the top coat had dried, the finishing touch was the hardware. I found these rose gold cup handles in my inventory and funny I wasn't even going to try them on this piece I'm not sure these look rose gold to me however I believe they're described as copper so if you're looking for something similar uh, I think you'll find it as copper cup handles not rose gold but to me they look like rose gold <laughs> anyways I wasn't even going to try them out but I'm so glad I did because once I put one against the piece to test it I just loved loved the look and here's a little quick tip for installing hardware. I like using my hardware installation um, template, which I picked up from Amazon for around $7. I find this little tool invaluable. It really helps me center the hardware and make it so easy for me to know where to drill. However, if you don't have one of these templates and you want a DIY hack to install your hardware, use painter's tape. And all you have to do is take a piece of painter's tape and apply it to the back of your hardware. Then take a pencil and run it over the hardware holes so you'll see exactly where the middle of that hardware hole is. Then measure your furniture or your drawer exactly where you want your hardware to go. And of course, this will differ on each different hardware you use. Lay the painter's tape on, measure again. So measure twice, drill once, <laughs> and then you know exactly where to drill your holes. And it makes installing hardware so much easier. So let's take a look at these curb shopped nightstands before. And here's what they look like now. I am so happy I tried this floral decoupage paper and this apricot paint. I think they came together beautifully and the rose gold cup handles were just the icing on the cake. I can't wait to hear what you think. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it's inspired you to try some decoupage on your furniture. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I love hearing your comments. They make my day. And if you guys have anything specific that you'd like me to do a tutorial on, feel free to leave su suggestions down below as well. Um, it's, it's not that easy. When you've been doing this for 10 years, <laughs> it's not that easy coming up with fresh ideas all the time. So help me out leave your comments down below again i love hearing from you also if you found any value with this video please consider subscribing to my youtube channel i can't believe that i'm over 14,000 subscribers so far thank you so very much and you can also follow me over at salvagedinspirations.com where i have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful Feel free to follow me on socials. You can find me over on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And until next time, I hope you have a beautiful day. Happy painting and see you again soon. Bye guys.